Hello class, welcome to our lecture on the properties of vectors. So in this lecture, we're gonna talk about a couple of different mathematical quantities, some of which you may have never heard of before. We're gonna talk about scalars and vectors. We're gonna talk about the nomenclature of vectors and what the components of a vector are. We'll then proceed into discussing unit vectors, scalar multiplication, and the zero vector. So let's begin with a question. Can you tell me the difference between the two following statements? One, a car is moving at 50 meters per second. Or two, a car is moving north at 50 meters per second. Well, let's think about it. Let's start off with a sketch of each one. So let's say we have a car. I'm going to just represent my first car with a circle. And it says the car is moving at 50 meters per second. Okay, I don't know the direction it's moving. It could be moving in this direction or this direction, maybe this direction or that direction or that direction. I have no idea. All I know is the car is moving at 50 meters per second. Now the second statement says the car is moving at 50 meters per second north. So we're given a specific direction, 50 meters per second north. So what is the difference between these two statements? Well, one of the cars, we're just given a speed, and the other car, we're given a speed and a direction. So this gets us to the concept of a vector. What a vector is. Now, the thing about vectors is they're very important for a number of different physical quantities. If you wanna talk about the position of something, you're saying that car is over there. That's representing a vector. Well, if you say it's over there, 50 meters. Or if you're saying the car is moving at 50 meters per second north, that's a vector. Or if you're saying Earth is pulling down on me with a force of 700 newtons, that's a vector. Now notice that each one of these quantities that I just gave you an example of, position, velocity, and force, I gave you an example of an amount, how much force, how much speed, how far away, and a direction. So quantities like these we call vectors. So in order to further understand a vector, let's talk, let's introduce the idea of a scalar. So a scalar is a directionless value that represents just a quantities. Scalars can have an algebraic sign, units, but not a direction in space. So for example, the number five is a scalar something that has a mass of 25 kilograms. That's an amount, that's a scalar. 50 meters, 70 meters per second, 100 liters, 78 degrees. All of those different quantities I gave you, mass, distance, speed, volume, temperature, they all represent scalar values. Now we could contrast that with what a vector is. A vector is a mathematical representation of a quantity that has a certain amount, which we'll call that amount magnitude, acting in a specific direction. So again, an example of a vector would be like position. Monterey is 46 kilometers south of Santa Cruz or a velocity. Sarah drove her car at 60 kilometers per hour north on Highway 1. Or a force. Mel pushed his car forward with a thousand newtons of force. So let's talk about different aspects of a vector. We can represent vectors graphically using an arrow. 
So there are key components to this graphical representation of a vector. The butt end of a vector we call the tail of the vector. The pointy end of a vector we call the head of the vector. The length of a vector is something that we call the magnitude of the vector. And the orientation the vector makes in space relative to some coordinate axis we call the direction of the vector. So all so the reason why we use arrows to represent vectors because arrows point in specific directions and arrows have specific links. So these arrows I'm drawing we could use to represent different vectors. We can also represent a vector algebraically. So a vector may be represented by using a letter or a pair of letters written like this. So if you see something in printed text, they will often represent a vector in bold face. A lot of the older textbooks, before they got fancy with, with uh, typesetting, uh, represented vectors as characters that were bold characters. Now, it's kind of hard for us to bold face every time we want to write a vector. That would take some time. So when we write a vector, normally we use an arrow to represent a vector. Now, vectors will often go, be, well, vectors go between two points, between the tail of the vector and the head of the vector. Let's call this point A, let's call this point B, and we'll draw a vector connecting points A and B. So we could signify this vector as the two points, A and B, with an arrow written above them. So this signifies that the vector goes from point A to point B. Now, oftentimes, we'll just signify a vector with just a single variable with an arrow on top. So for example, I could have called vector C equal to the vector connecting points A and B. So this vector I drew above, we could have called vector C. Or let's say I have a vector D. Vector D is pointing to the left. I have D with an arrow representing that. Now, if a vector V is defined by a directed line segment from the initial point A of the vector to the terminal point B of the vector, then as I said, we just, we just write those two points with an arrow above them. Now algebraically, a vector can be represented using several different notations. A very common notation that many textbooks use is bracket notation. So with bracket notation, we represent the vector in between two pointy brackets, basically as less than, greater than symbol. And you'll see for this vector, there's two pieces or components to the vector. There is a first component and then a comma, a second component. Now be careful because this does not indicate a point in space. Remember, vectors, with the exception of the zero vector, represents two different components or two different points in space. So when you see those arrow brackets with a comma in between them, that doesn't specify a point. That specifies something that we call the two components of vector A. We're going to learn more about components a little bit later.
Another common notation that we use to represent vectors that I use a lot, especially in our physics and engineering classes, is the unit vector notation. So we could represent that same vector a algebraically using unit vector notation by indicating its components and the coordinate system being used that those co components are parallel to. So notice those variables a1 and a2 like we saw in the in the bracket notation. They represent the same components of a vector but just in a slightly different representation. This is my personal favorite probably because I'm mo more used to it. Um, using unit vector notation is very useful when you know the specific coordinate system we're dealing with. Most of us are familiar with the rectangular coordinate system, that is the x-axis, the y-axis. In our courses, in our uh, intermediate calculus course, we're going to learn about spherical coordinates and polar coordinates. The usefulness of unit vector notation is it gives you a way of specifying the coordinate system in which we will compare this vector against. So these symbols i hat and j hat, they correspond to direction, specifically the x-axis and the y-axis respectively. There is another common notation we use for, for vectors, and that's the magnitude direction notation. Now, magnitude direction notation isn't so useful to us algebraically. If we want to do any kind of algebraic manipulation of our vectors, it's easiest to use either bracket notation or unit vector notation. The usefulness of magnitude direction notation, as you'll see later, is it's, it's a way of representing the amount of the vector, this amount of the vector, or length of the vector, again, we call the magnitude, and the direction the vector is pointing. So let's give us our mathematical definition of a vector, or at least less formal definition of a vector in a plane. A vector in a plane is an ordered pair of real numbers, a1 and a2, called the scalar components of vector a. The zero vector is zero vector equals bracket zero comma zero close bracket. Now I want you to notice something about how this is written. Notice the variable a in this situation is written with a bold font. So if you see text written in a bold font, that corresponds to the fact that that variable represents a vector. Notice that we introduced some words, scalar components. I've used the word components earlier. And remember, scalar is a number without direction. So here where it says a1 comma a2, a1 is some number. a2 is some number. The combination of those two components gives us an indication of a direction in space that you'll see shortly. And then also notice that zero zero vector equals zero comma zero. The zero vector is the only vector that is literally at a mathematical point in space. And it's used so we could, it, it's been defined this way in order for us to do algebra with vectors because vectors with this definition of the zero vector allows us to do algebraic operations. Let's now define a position vector. A vector with an initial point at the origin and terminal point a1, a2 
is called the position vector of the point a1, a2, and is denoted by bracket a1, comma, a2. Well, those are a lot of words, but let me show you what I mean by that. First off, let's start off by sketching a coordinate system. We will sketch a rectangular coordinate system that has an x-axis and a y-axis. One thing you should note, coordinate axes are vectors. Notice how I drew the x-axis as an arrow going to the right. That's a vector. And notice the y-axis is drawn as an arrow going up. That's a vector. It's just that we have to remember with these coordinate axes, these vectors extend forever. So they don't have a specified length, but they point in a specific direction. And these two coordinate axes are perpendicular to each other. So orthogonal, or we'll say they are orthonormal to each other. Let's draw a vector with components a1 and a2. I'm going to use a different color. So let's say this is our position vector. I will label this vector as a hat and, or I'm sorry, a vector. An A vector has two components. It has an X component and it has a Y component. Now, where those two components are in space? Well, you can think of A1, A2 as telling you the coordinate of a point in space. So the coordinate of this point in space is right here. We will call this point P, not vector P, because this is just a mathematical point in space, but point P at the x equals a1 position and y equals a2. So the other point for this position vector is, in, is at the origin. So the position vector always has as its, <clears throat> excuse me, as its but or tail of the vector always has its tail starting at the origin. So those are our two points that this vector is formed between. If I happen to call this point Q, for example, then we could label this vector A as being QP, where we are starting at the point Q ending at the point P. You could have a position vector in any quadrant. You could have a position vector in the fourth quadrant. Perhaps this position vector would have components of, we'll just say A3 comma A4. Now, if you heard that meow in the background, that's my cat, Kaya. She's attending class as well. Hi, Kaya. We could have a vector in the second quadrant. This might be called vector C with components. And actually, let's use components C1 and C2. And let's go back to vector B. Just for consistency's sake, let's go ahead and call vector B's components B1 and B2. So now let's explore what we mean by unit vector notation. So unit vector notation is used to represent a vector in terms of its components. Now we've already talked about components kind of loosely, but let's specifically talk about what we mean by the components of a vector. The components of a vector are those pieces of a vector that is parallel to a coordinate axis. So if you see from this slide, we have the x component. Notice how that x component, notice how vector a 
I kind of created a right triangle out of vector A, where the hypotenuse of the right triangle is the magnitude of vector A, and each leg of vector A corresponds to one of its components. So notice the leg of the vector A that is parallel to the x-axis, A1. Well, we call that the x component of vector A. And notice how the leg of vector A, the leg of that right triangle that is perpendicular to the x-axis, happens to be parallel to the y-axis. So we will call that the y component when we are in rectangular coordinates. So in rectangular coordinates, the two components of a vector in a plane is the x component and the y component. Now, each component of a vector is itself a one-dimensional vector that points in the direction of the coordinate axis it represents. The x component of a vector is the projection of that vector along the x-axis. So that is a vector. And we could represent that x component vector like this. We could say it is a1 for that x component is equal to a1. Notice the difference between these two. I have an arrow above a1 on the left, and I don't have an arrow above a1 on the right. This written as is is an incomplete statement because this is saying vector a1 is equal to scalar a1. Remember, a scalar is just a value. It could be 50 pounds, it could be minus 30 degrees Celsius, just a value, while vectors are values acting in a direction. So this statement currently is an incorrect statement to say a vector, something with magnitude and direction, is equal to a scalar, something that has no direction. So I am going to indicate the direction that the x component is lying by using a unit vector. So this unit vector that we use for the rectangular coordinate system, we use i hat. So that's the lowercase i, and that little caret on top we call hat. So i hat is a vector that points along the x-axis. That i hat vector itself has a magnitude of one unit. Now, unit vectors are just what they sound like. Unit vectors are vectors that have a value of exactly 1.0. They do not have any units. And they point in a particular direction. So unit vectors are used to indicate direction. For the x-axis, we use i hat. For the y-axis, in rectangular coordinates, we use j hat. So j hat is the y-axis unit vector, and it also has a magnitude of 1.0. So when we write the components of vector A as one-dimensional vectors, we write the scalar part of that one-dimensional vector along with the direction it points in. So the x component is the piece that is parallel to the x-axis, and the y component is the piece that is parallel to the y-axis. So when we combine these two components in unit vector notation, we have a1 i hat plus a2 j hat. When we write these two components in bracket notation, we have a1 comma a2. The problem with bracket notation is bracket notation doesn't give you the coordinate system we are using. 
while the unit vector notation does indicate the coordinate system you're using because by convention we know that i hat and j hat corresponds to the x and y axes respectively. So to avoid ambiguity use the unit vector notation when when you know you're dealing in a particular coordinate system. Now if we were to draw these components out here is our x-axis, here's our y-axis, and let's just draw the unit vector pieces first. So the unit vector that points along the x-axis, this little vector is i-hat. Remember, i-hat is exactly 1.0 units long. And let's draw j-hat, the unit vector that points along the y-axis. Remember that j-hat unit vector is also exactly 1.0 units long. So if we wanted to represent, let's say, the x component, the x component has a certain length along the x-axis, so that is a1. So notice that I drew something with a length of a1 parallel to i-hat, and the y component, I'll draw a arrow of length a2 that is parallel to the j-hat vector. So let's talk about the signs in front of these components. So the sign in front of the component of a vector represents the direction that the component is pointing. A plus sign indicates that the component pointing, is pointing along the positive direction of an axis, while a minus sign indicates that the component is pointing along the negative direction of a particular axis. Okay, let's do a little example. A small airplane leaves an airport on an overcast day and is later sighted 215 kilometers away in a direction making an angle of 22 degrees north of due east. Sketch the position vector representing the location of the airplane relative to the airport. What are the x and y components of the airplane's position vector? Spend a couple of minutes brainstorming how you would answer this question. Right now, this may be new to you, so you may not know quite how to answer it, but if nothing else, read the question, try to interpret it, and brainstorm. If you think you have a plan of attack for addressing this question, then go ahead and try and solve it. I'll do my solution for the question after a couple of minutes.